Ever wondered how ships manage their sewage while at sea or in port? International regulations, like MARPOL Annex 4, set strict guidelines to prevent marine pollution. In this video, we'll break down sewage treatment on ships, the role of holding tanks, how sewage is processed, and the rules for discharge. Let's get started. Ships must retain sewage when they are in port, as discharging untreated or even treated sewage is strictly prohibited. This is done using a holding tank, which stores both sewage and flushing water. Each toilet flush typically uses 5 liters of seawater, meaning large passenger vessels require bigger tanks. When the ship leaves port, the sewage is either pumped to shore facilities or discharged at sea under strict conditions. But holding sewage for too long has its own issues. Without oxygen, anaerobic bacteria break it down, producing toxic and flammable gases like hydrogen sulfide and methane. This also causes corrosion inside the tank. To avoid storing untreated sewage, ships use sewage treatment plants, STPs. One example is the Eslin Zero Discharge System. Let's break it down. First, sewage enters a separation chamber where solids are removed. The solids are ground and transferred to a holding tank, while the liquid moves to a treatment chamber. Chemicals like chlorine and caustic compounds treat the liquid, making it safe for flushing toilets. Finally, excess liquid overflows into the holding tank for later disposal. Another system is the biological sewage treatment plant, where air is pumped into the sewage to encourage aerobic bacteria to break it down into harmless water and CO2. Any remaining solids settle in a clarification chamber and are returned for further breakdown. The final treated effluent is disinfected using chlorine before being discharged. Marine engineers should know four key terms related to sewage treatment. 1. Biochemical oxygen demand, BOD, the amount of oxygen required by bacteria to break down sewage. IMO standards require BOD to be below 50 mg per liter. 2. Coliform count, this indicates bacteria in sewage. After treatment, coliform levels should be below 250 per 100 milliliters. 3. Solids discharge limits. IMO regulates how much solid waste can be pumped out at sea. 4. Anaerobic versus aerobic digestion. Anaerobic bacteria break down sewage without oxygen, producing toxic gases, while aerobic bacteria use oxygen to create a cleaner effluent. Marple Annex 4 sets strict discharge rules for ships. Within 3 nautical miles from land, only treated and disinfected sewage can be discharged. Beyond 12 nautical miles, untreated sewage can be discharged only if the ship is moving at least 4 knots and the discharge rate follows approved standards. Ships with certified sewage treatment plants can discharge treated sewage at sea without restrictions, but it must be free of floating solids and discoloration. The discharge rate depends on the ship's speed, draft, and width. It is regulated to ensure sewage is properly diluted before reaching the ocean. To keep sewage treatment systems running efficiently, regular maintenance is essential. Cleaning chambers, to remove accumulated sludge. Checking aeration diffusers, to ensure oxygen flow. Inspecting air lifts to confirm sludge returns properly. Monitoring tank coatings for corrosion or damage. Sewage treatment on ships isn't just about compliance, it's about protecting our oceans. Following Marple Annex 4 and maintaining treatment plants ensures that marine pollution is minimized. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe for more maritime content, and share your thoughts in the comments below.